Night Trap is one of those games whose reputation precedes it. Released in 1992 by developer Digital Pictures for the ill-fated Mega Drive add-on the Sega CD, it was perhaps the most controversial video game of its time, a title used by politicians and parents alike as an example of how video games were going to corrupt your kids. That is bananas, because Night Trap isn't really very scary, very sexy, or very violent. Rather, it's a cheesy mess of bad acting, low quality writing, and questionable game mechanics that you're more likely to find funny than you are frightening. And what better way to kick off a video about the game than with this perfect example of exactly what I mean. According to then-Senator Joe Lieberman during a congressional hearing on video game violence back in 1993, the game you just saw a clip from is deeply offensive and one that should be taken off the market. This is of course a ridiculous opinion because Night Trap is a silly game, a stupid silly game, but as bonkers as it might sound, there were a lot of people who felt similar to our mate Joe. Video game graphics were beginning to move beyond the pixelated efforts of the 8 and 16-bit generations and towards 3D and everything was suddenly beginning to look a lot more realistic. In a way, I can understand why some people got a bit rattled by what they were seeing. During the 80s, there had been a huge uproar around violent movies and the effect they might have been having on children and even adults. In England, for example, we coined the term video nasties for films that were considered especially shocking, and any deemed to be too much for our fragile British brains were promptly banned, never again to see the light of day, or indeed the bottom shelf of a blockbuster video. This is important context which sheds more light on why the uninformed of the time might have got so riled up. To begin with, they only had to worry about violent movies, but then suddenly, within a decade, games like Night Trap meant you weren't just able to watch scary films, you were able to interact with them as well. This hysteria around violent video games is one which would last most of the 90s, with releases like Resident Evil and Grand Theft Auto not exactly helping matters before it later begun to fizzle out. It's an important part of Night Trap's history to be aware of, as along with titles like Doom and Mortal Kombat, it was part of the first wave of video games which really made some people clutch their pearls. In the present, Night Trap is considered nothing more than quite a tame oddity which includes nothing you wouldn't see in the average teen-rated video game, but the fervour around it back in the early 90s without doubt makes it a part of video game history. I realise I've not made Night Trap sound like that frightening a game so far, but to be fair, its setup does sound like it could make for a rather terrifying tale at first glance. Although this scene, added to the 25th anniversary edition from previously unused footage, doesn't get things off to a very scary start. <laughs> Oh no, there's no escape, my sweet little plum. <laughs> Night Trap begins with a briefing, with you taking on the role of a special operative for the Sega Control Attack Team, or SCAT for short. Yes, you heard me correctly, SCAT for short. If you don't know why that's hilarious, I do not under any circumstances recommend googling that acronym. Better in that case to stay in the dark, I think. The <clears throat> SCAT team have been tasked with investigating the disappearance of five teenage girls, last seen at the Martin family's winery estate. The Martins had refused to let police search the property, and so law enforcement had rightfully become very suspicious of the mysterious family. We suspect they're using the winery house as a cover, and they're getting anyone who stumbles onto their scheme, whatever that is. Handing the case over to <clears throat> Scat, the team quickly got busy investigating the house, and soon discovered that a number of traps and cameras had been rigged up inside, all controlled from one central location on the grounds, which they managed to patch into. One of our guys put an override on the camera cable unit here in the back hallway. Which means? Which means we have complete control of the cameras and the traps. But who operates that? They do. And who's that? While you take control of the traps and cameras, <clears throat> Scat will also have someone on the inside, Kelly, who will provide ground support, and hopefully between the two of you, you'll be able to save the next batch of unfortunate potential victims already on their way to the Martin estate. 
If I'm being completely honest with you, my first impressions of Night Trap gameplay-wise weren't altogether brilliant. Despite supposedly containing updates to make the game more accessible, I couldn't find anything that told me how to actually play it. So, like any seasoned gamer, I jumped in and started fiddling, and soon enough I just about managed to figure out what was going on. It's not a particularly tough system to get to grips with when someone explains it to you, which I'm not going to, as that wouldn't be giving you the full Night Trap experience now, would it? I'm joking, of course, instructions were later patched in, so I guess I can throw you all a bone. On your screen at all times is a monitor displaying whichever room you're currently keeping an eye on, eight camera feeds to choose from bottom left, a timer and sensor bar bottom middle, and your selected access code colour plus a record of how many augers you've trapped bottom right. Augers are your bread and butter enemy you'll be dealing with for most of the game. They continually enter and exit different rooms of the house, and it's up to you to trap as many of them as you can. Using the camera feeds, you can jump between different rooms to eavesdrop on whatever's going on at the time but more importantly, you'll need to be constantly on the lookout for these weird little fellas, who you'll usually spot sort of awkwardly waddling around. When you spot one or more of them creeping about, you have to quickly jump on the feed of the area they're in, wait until the green sensor bar changes colour to yellow and finally red, at which point you hit the trap button to, well, trap them. <laughs> However, the traps will only work if you're using the correct access code from a selection of six possible colours, and it's regularly randomly changed by members of the Martin family on a few different occasions every time you play. If you fail to switch to one of the scenes where they discuss changing it, you'll likely miss trapping a few baddies as you try to figure out which new colour you should be using to activate the traps. Also, do note the reduced quality of the audio spliced in for the access code changes. It often makes the characters sound like they have a very sudden but very temporary sore throat. What's going on? That girl looks exactly like Madeline. Oh, not that again. No, not that again. Come on, Studley, we better change that code. How about purple? Sure. <laughs> If you're wondering what the timer's for, I assume it's included so that it's possible to perfect the game by using it to make notes on what happens in which room when, so you can improve on subsequent playthroughs, and it is also worth noting that a red light above the camera feeds will occasionally flash to indicate when you've missed an opportunity to trap more augers. It's very important that you're always on your toes when it comes to the augers, as you will be unceremoniously dismissed should you not live up to expectations. Look. It was your job to protect Kelly and the rest of those girls. But from what I've just seen, the place is being overrun. You've missed way too many of those suckers. Now until you figure out how to do your job and do it right, you're dismissed. Breaking contact. This happened a good number of times until I got the hang of things, at which point my frustration only grew as I realised a glitch meant I couldn't blooming progress past a certain point. I'd do everything required of me. I'd trap enough augers, catch any access code changes, and avoid coughing up a lung from laughing too hard. And then, after this scene, the camera feeds would never come back, and I'd be forced to quit the game. The issue was patched out fairly quickly, but it led to me putting down Night Trap for several years in annoyance, and to this day, I'm still unsure whether I'm entirely over it. Anyways, enough of my whinging, I promise you I'm only moderately surly in real life, and let's talk about how everything plays out. Before I do so, it's worth noting that it can be tough to catch the entirety of scenes due to the absurd amount of camera switching required, so at times when I want to show you footage, I may switch over to theatre mode so you can see some scenes uninterrupted, just in case you wonder about the change in framing. Also, if you plan on playing the game and don't want to have it spoiled, I'd recommend switching off now. When Night Trap hands over control to you, you're given a good minute and a half or so to get used to switching between cameras and catching augers while nothing really happens to help you get into the swing of things. That's all well and good, but from the point the nefarious Victor Martin and his nephew Tony arrive at the house to begin the story proper, everything becomes somewhat nonsensical. This isn't necessarily the fault of the story itself. It's B-movie cheese, but it does make sense if you manage to catch all the important stuff. No, the issue is that you have to focus so much on stopping the augers to avoid failure that a lot of the time you're only going to be catching brief out-of-context snippets of whatever's going on around the house. Oh, Vic, 
monster, you monster. <laughs> Come on, let's go. We don't want to upset the augurs. Wanna die, Eddie? You probably will manage to piece together the overarching narrative, as it's not an overly complicated one, and in the game's defence, there are several points where you'll be able to observe things for a minute or two without having to trap any augurs, but nevertheless, it's a title I think you'd need to play a good number of times in order to pick up on every little detail. By the by, I cannot imagine how bastard hard that must have been for those playing the original version of the game. The 25th anniversary edition is a massive step up in that you can actually see what's happening around the house in real time on every feed, not just the one you're watching. That makes it a million times easier to catch different story beats or trap augurs, as you're usually able to spot friends and foes bumbling about the place and can then switch feeds as required. In older versions of the game, the feeds of the cameras you're not focused in on are placed by static images, making it even harder for you to become a lean, mean, auger trapping machine, or figure out what on earth is actually happening. I found my first playthrough of Night Trap difficult enough while being able to see everything happening around the house, and I eventually resorted to using a guide on subsequent playthroughs to ease some of the pressure, because at times it made me feel a bit like this. It's actually a bit of a shame that Night Trap is so often such a frustrating experience, as I really like the idea of it in principle. The story unfolds in a relatively realistic manner, with different conversations or events occurring around different parts of the house, sometimes simultaneously, with characters entering and exiting the action frequently. Please do note that when I say realistic, I mean in terms of there not simply being one focal point at all times, it is not realistic in terms of what actually happens. Understand. Just leave now! Ah! Hold it! You stay out of this! Don't make me use this, Tony. <laughs> Being able to choose which parts of the story you follow during each playthrough is admittedly a clever idea, and you have to give some credit to Digital Pictures for managing to create this quite detailed tapestry of events. I'd imagine figuring out when and where all the different parts of the story needed to take place, and then making sure they all aligned as the game entered its final stages was a difficult job, and honestly, it's an impressive achievement. The game may not execute too well in terms of cinematography and gameplay, but experimental games like Night Trap are always needed to help other developers figure out what works and what doesn't, so that the medium as a whole can continue to evolve. I don't know whether it's actually the case or not, but it's hard not to think that the Five Nights at Freddy series, for example, may have taken some inspiration from Night Trap. Regardless of what you think of Night Trap's core concept and its gameplay, it's the cinematic side of things which is the biggest letdown, or maybe the biggest draw depending on how you feel about rubbish B-movie horror. If you go into the game expecting a decent quality horror story, you are going to be very disappointed, and that is a big issue considering the majority of its runtime is spent watching video sequences. On the other hand, if you have a high tolerance for cheesiness and love campy late 80s, early 90s B-movie horror, like like I do, you are going to have a whale of a time. There are an extraordinary number of stupid moments in the game, to the point where they're so regular I can't help but wonder whether it's intentional. I want to highlight a few of my favourites, but do also believe me when I say that the acting is so terrible I could have realistically chosen almost any scene in the game. The gang singing their hearts out to the game's theme in the living room always gets me. as do the Fisher-Price Commandos from the <clears throat> SCAT team. And my personal favourite is Cousin Tony's dialogue, which wouldn't feel out of place in cult classic movie The Room or a Twilight novel. You remind me of a person I knew and loved long ago, but that could never be.
It's also important to note that the game is a product of its time in many ways, and with this early 90s cheese comes a few things that haven't aged well at all. For example, Night Trap's representation of women isn't brilliant on the whole, and this particularly poor racial stereotype definitely wouldn't fly nowadays. Vampires, you gotta be jiving me! Buried somewhere deep within this bizarre hodgepodge of bad acting and sometimes severely out-of-date characters, I do feel like there is occasionally the odd moment where Night Trap threatens to become something genuinely interesting. A scene that more outspoken critics of the game focused on some 20 years ago was this one, in which a particularly pervy auger hides in the shower while Lisa freshens up. It's fairly easy to miss the auger hiding when flicking through the camera feeds, and the black silhouette in the background contrasts with Lisa clad in white in the foreground to create a visually interesting, moderately creepy shot. There's also this scene where the girls find the body of the first <clears throat> scat member to kick the bucket, having his blood drained in a closet, which again is unsettling, even if the scene depicting his demise minutes earlier is a bit rubbish. When it comes to the story itself, it's passable. Because Night Trap's runtime is so short, clocking in at around 25 minutes, there's very little time available for building tension, which means much of the mystery surrounding the story evaporates mere moments into the game. Wondering whether the Martin family are in fact responsible for the disappearances? You needn't, it's implied they are from minute one. Unsure of what the connection is between the augurs and the family? Don't worry, you're told they're busy mates from the outset. Hoping for a slow burn, terrifying tale that will make the hair on the back of your neck stand up? Well, you're going to be disappointed, because everything flies by extremely fast. To quickly summarise, the Martin family are 100% responsible for the disappearance of the previous group of teenagers, because their winery is actually being used to harvest blood for the augurs, a sort of half-vampire, half-malformed Teletubby species which needs a regular supply of blood to survive. The teenagers you're tasked with protecting are next on the menu, but as long as you do a reasonably good job of capturing enough augurs and make it to the right rooms on time to directly intervene in their kidnapping scenes, you should get through everything with the group intact. In the game's final third, you also discover that the Martin family are themselves full-blown vampires, and much like the augurs, you're given the opportunity to trap them to ensure Kelly also makes it out safe and sound. Eventually, if you're lucky, or if you ended up shamelessly using a guide like I did, you might manage to reach the end of the game, hopefully having done pretty well. Given I'd trapped 98 out of a possible 100 augers, I must say, I did expect a little bit of fanfare, a pat on the back for a job well done, but instead, Night Trap just sort of ends. Thanks Control, you just saved my life. And you were very good. You saved all my friends, trapped most of the augs. I'll bet with a little practice, you could be perfect. <laughs> Tell you now, Kelly, as much as I enjoyed giving it a go for this video, I'm likely never playing the game again, let alone putting in practice to complete it perfectly, is what I thought when I reached Night Trap's conclusion with a near-perfect run. However, I'm sure you'll be over the moon to hear that I place so little value on my free time that I actually did go through everything again to finish with a 100% success rate. Alright, you were perfect! Nobody's ever done that! I knew I could count on you. Thanks. You are wonderful. And next time I'm on special assignment, I'm going to insist that you back me up. I'd go anywhere with you, and feel secure knowing that you were at the controls. <laughs> nah, you wouldn't. <laughs> I didn't think so. Bye-bye, see you next time. Putting to one side the fact I'd rather eat my own hands than be involved in another of Kelly's special missions, that's it. That's the extent of the changes if you catch all 100 augers. I used a guide, I was playing on the modern, far easier version, and I was still incredibly miffed to see how little things changed. I genuinely can't imagine how cheesed off gamers who devoted their time to perfecting Night Trap on 1992's far harder version must have been, as they realised all their hard work replaying the game over and over again while making copious notes was basically for naught. At least in the 25th anniversary edition, there's the aforementioned theatre mode. I found a guide online, used WordPad to edit a few values inside my save, et voila, I immediately had access to every video in the game. So I did what any sane person would do, and watch the scene which plays if you choose to trap Kelly at the end, over and over again.
Yeah, fuck you, Kelly. It made me feel much, much better about things. I think for all but the most hardened gamers who want to experience this uniquely camp curiosity on its original hardware, the 25th Anniversary Edition is a great way to play Night Trap. It's not a great game, nor is it a particularly good short film, but in spite of that, I have to say I did really enjoy myself. The game is a novelty as much as anything else, but if you fancy kicking back and enjoying a title that definitely has that so bad it's good quality, Night Trap is no bad choice. You can run through the game in little more than an hour and the often multi-scene setup means there is some enjoyment to be had from trying to spot all of the ridiculousness you missed on previous playthroughs. As someone who vaguely remembers how infamous the game was for a good while after its release, it also personally gave me a massive chuckle to witness how tame it actually is firsthand, knowing that Night Trap had parents, the press, and senators alike huffing and puffing over its content even back in 1992 is bizarre to me, given that movies had been depicting far, far worse for many years prior. Nowadays, what little horror there may have once been has all but disappeared due to how badly the game has aged, but to me, that's no negative. Night Trap wasn't exactly the most frightening experience back in 1992 to begin with, and now, some 20 years later, it's blossomed into one of the most wonderfully stupid video games I've ever played. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls, and sweet little plums. If you enjoyed it, do consider liking, subscribing, and playing Night Trap at least once because it's brilliantly stupid, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.